Hello, folks. And I was just thinking of some things that maybe I could give you today, hopefully be an encouragement to you. And uh, I'm in my Bible uh, right now in the book of Acts, chapter 20. The book of Acts, chapter 20. And uh, one verse I want to give you, and just a couple of things I'd like to give you uh, today. Verse 24, Paul would write and say, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul said, none of these things move me. Uh, Paul had a great resolve in his life uh, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, you and I need a resolve today. Uh, there are difficult times around us today, and, and those are going to be, folks, till the Lord takes us home. And uh, you and I need a resolve about us. Paul would say, none of these things move me. If we look at the context of the passage that we're looking at today, um, Paul, he could say that none of these things move me because he had a glimpse of the reward. He had a glimpse of the end of the race, what would happen uh, when it was over. And folks, folks, you and I need to get a glimpse of, of the end as well. We're living in the present, and that's true. And uh, there are many things that happen around us that could move us today. Uh, but you and I need to get a glimpse of what's on the other side. Uh, folks, we've got a great future to look forward to. Those of us that know Jesus Christ as our Savior, this life in which we live, this time in which we live now will come to pass. Uh, there will come a day when we live in eternity. And folks, that's the reward, what happens when we get there. You and I need to get that in view. We need to have a glimpse uh, of the end. Uh, but Paul had a past of hard and difficult times. Uh, if we look in Acts chapter 20 and verse 19, Paul said this, Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Uh, Paul had a difficult past that he could look back on, um, serving the Lord with many tears, things that caused him heartache. Uh, we could go to the book of 2 Corinthians, if we could look in chapter 11, uh, Paul would write this of his life. He'd say, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death often. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, saved one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, that phrase there, in watchings often, just means he had a lot of sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the cares of all the churches. Paul would say all of these things that have happened to me, <clears throat> and besides that, the things that come upon me daily, the cares of all the churches, can imagine the load that Paul must have carried. But he had a past of hard and difficult times. Paul had a future of hard and difficult times as well. We could look in the passage that we're looking in in verse 22. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Paul would write, And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall be befall me there. Uh, he had some difficult times ahead of him. He said, I'm going to Jerusalem, and I don't even know what's going to happen to me when I get there. He said this uh, in verse 23. He said, Say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, 
saying that bonds and afflictions abide in me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that all, that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take to you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul had a future of hard and difficult times. So I'm going to Jerusalem. I don't know what's going to happen to me there. I know this, that when I leave here, you may never see my face again. Uh... But Paul wasn't going to be deterred. He wasn't going to be moved. None of these things moved me. Paul's life wasn't dear to himself. He said, none of these things moved me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. He had a course to finish, he said in verse 24, so that I might finish my course with joy. Paul had a job to do from the Lord to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He said, because of these things, I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be deterred. Paul had a love for the people that he served in verse 25. Now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I've gone preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I've taken you to record this day. I'm pure from the blood of all men. I've not shunned to declare unto you the whole gospel of God, the whole counsel uh, of God. He loved the people that he served. He knew that he would not see them again. And Paul could say that I'm pure from the blood of all men. I don't have any regrets, nothing to look back on and say, I would have wished I'd have done it a little different here or a little different there. He said in verse 27, I've told you the truth. Boy, how to resolve. You and I need a resolve like that. Folks, what will be our resolve today? What will it be that will deter you and I from serving the Lord Jesus? What would make us quit today? Paul said, nothing's going to move me. But I wonder today, what's going to move us? Oh, listen, we're in a time right now of a pandemic. <clears throat> there's a disease, there's a, a virus that's, uh, that's uh, running rapid across our planet today. And I want to say to you folks, lest you and I have a resolve today that that's not going to move us. We've had to do a little bit, of, uh, uh, some things a little bit different than we've done them in the past. I'm sitting here today and I'm putting a recording, uh, fixing to upload it to YouTube. And, and folks, I never would have dreamed in my life that I would do something like this. But we're having to do things a little bit different. But folks, we don't have to quit. Uh, they're saying we can't meet together right now. So, all right, we're going to get a little bit uh, creative and, and, and find a way where we can get messages out to one another and encourage one another in our walk with the Lord. And folks, I want to say to you, these things are going to pass. You and I are going to meet together again. We just need to resolve to stay strong. Is sickness going to deter us? I hope not, folks. Let's keep serving the Lord no matter what. Uh, this is a time of a uh, of financial crisis right now. But folks, don't let that deter you, deter you and I. Listen, God is God when the, when the dollar's strong and he's God when the dollar's weak. And you and I just need to keep serving the Lord. Some of you may be laid off from your jobs right now. But folks, don't let that deter you. Stay strong. Keep serving Jesus. Will our friends deter us? I'm afraid a lot of times they do. We're afraid sometimes that we're going to offend our friends. We're going to offend our family. Oh, listen, folks, don't let that deter you. I would rather offend them in this life with the gospel than have them to go into eternal life and knowing that I didn't offend them in this life, but they went into eternity without God. And so don't let friends deter you. Stay strong. Stay true. Will peer pressure deter us? And folks, that's not just for uh, uh, our young people today. 
those of us of adults, full-grown Christians, mature Christians in the Lord, you're going to face peer pressures too, but don't let that deter you. Don't let the apathy of those around us, the I don't care attitude today deter us. No, don't do that. Don't let our past deter us. Maybe you've had some failures in the past. Well, I'm going to say to you folks, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. And if you've had failures in your past, don't let that deter you from serving the Lord today. Hey, can I say don't let um, victories of the past deter us either. We could sit down on our laurels and say, oh, we used to do this and we used to do that. And we had victory here and we had victory in another area. And we can sit down and say, well, we'll just let somebody else take over now. No, don't get an attitude like that either. Don't sit down on our victories of the past. There are victories in the future that God wants you and I to win. Victories that uh, can, battles that be, can be uh, uh, won today. And uh, so let's don't let the past, failures or victories, deter us. Let's don't let the thought of the past re repeating itself. Hey, listen, you may have fallen in the past. You, you may have backslidden and, and gotten into sin. Folks, don't let the thought of that deterring us. Oh, listen, when we confess it and we get it right to the Lord, no matter what it is, God says, I've forgiven it. Now go on and serve me. Let's don't let the thought of the future deter us. Now, I meet folks quite often and said, what's going to happen? I don't know. But I'm not going to let that deter me. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. And he's the God that I serve. And so let's don't worry about tomorrow. Let's live today, the life that God's given us today. And when we get to tomorrow, God will give us grace for tomorrow as well. So let's have some resolve. Paul said in verse 28, look at what he said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Listen, folks, let's have a resolve today that we're going to build one another up in our walk with the Lord. I'll get into the word of God. Let him encourage your heart today and then you take that encouragement that God gives to you and you pass it on to someone else who might need a word of encouragement. Let's be a, let's just resolve that, that we're going to encourage one another in our walk with the Lord. Let's resolve today that we're going to guard against error and division. Look in verse 29. Paul said, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. He's saying, look, at they're going to be some even from within our midst are going to drop, rise up and to try to draw some away. Let's guard against that error today. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul said, for the space of three years, I warned you, night and day, that there'd be those that would rise up, that would try to draw us away into error. Folks, I try to warn you often, and you know that I do. But be careful and don't be deterred. Uh, let's have a resolve that we're going to stand against error and division. Let's resolve, folks, that you and I are just going to trust in the grace of God. Look at verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Trust in his grace. And folks, it's true. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know whatever it holds, that God's grace is going to be sufficient to see us through any trial that we might face. And so let's trust in his grace. Let's trust in his ability to provide for us. Look in verse 33. I've coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know 
that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. Listen, folks, let's just trust in the ability to God to, God to provide for us. Um, folks, God's going to take care of us. He's promised that, he's would, that he would. Uh, the psalmist said, uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor see begging bread. And folks, whatever our need is, our God's going to meet it. We just need to trust in him to do that. So let's do that today. Look in verse 35. Now I've showed you all things, how that so laboring that uh, ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And folks, can I say to you, let's just trust in the words of the Lord. Folks, that's where our trust is at. It's not in government. It's not in those that are outside. Uh, our trust is in the Lord and in his word. And folks, when we find a promise in the word of God, let's just resolve that we're going to trust in that. I want to give you one more thing before I close. Let's trust in God's ability to carry on his work through his people. Look in verse 36. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorry most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. They accompanied him unto the ship. Um, folks, Paul was going away. And he had already told them, look, you're probably not going to see me anymore. It's probably going to be the last time that you see me. And that made the people sorrowful. And they walked with Paul to the ship and they saw him get on that ship and head out. And in their mind, they thought, we'll never see Paul again. But you know what, folks? If Paul was gone forever and they'd never see him again, God was still going to carry on his work through those people. Paul spent, he said, three years I've spent with you. Night and day I've warned you of some things with tears. And I'm going away. But God's going to carry on his work, folks. And he's going to use you and I to do that today. But Paul's not here today. He's been gone 2,000 years. And the work of God is still carrying on. He's going to use you today. And he's going to use me today to accomplish his will. Let's just resolve, folks, that we're going to build others up in the faith. That we're going to guard against error and division. That we're going to just trust in his grace. We're going to trust in God's ability to provide we're going to resolve that we're going to trust in his word. And then, folks, let's just trust. Let's just have the resolve that God is able to carry on his work through us, no matter what we might face. And so Paul says, none of these things move me. Folks, let's resolve today that none of these things that we're facing are going to move us away from the work of the Lord. Lord bless, and I'll be in contact with you soon.